Hello. Hey, you're back. Back. Let me guess, you have a gun you want to sell. You're right. <laughs> Rob's a gun guy. He comes in the shop a lot, and he always has some sort of interesting firearm to sell. All right, what do we got this time? What I've got is a Savage Navy, 36 caliber. OK. Um, Savage Navy. That is one ugly gun. No, that's not an ugly gun, Rick. That's a Navy gun, and it's pretty to me. This is because it has something to do with the damn Navy. That'll work. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Savage Navy revolver from the Civil War. It's extremely unusual design. I keep coming back here because, hey, they keep buying my guns. What am I to do? Yeah, this is really cool. I've never actually seen one of these things in person. I've never even had one in the store. They started making these in, like, 1862, 1861, yes, somewhere around there? Yes, they are making them right at the height of the war. As long as they could make it different, they could make it and sell it, and the government would buy it, because the government would buy any gun at this point. Well, like any entrepreneur, if there's money to be made, they found a way to make it. Yeah. That's the gun that resulted. So basically, cock it with your middle finger, and then fire it with your index finger. The thought was that was a good mechanism, because you could fire them a little quicker. I really don't see the advantage. More of a pain in the ass than it's worth. I mean, it's, it's heavy, it's awkward feeling, it just wants to tilt down. One of the goofiest designs. That's why I love it. These two fools don't know what they're talking about. Anything to do with the US Navy is high class. So I'm assuming you want to sell this like the rest of them? That's what I'm looking to do, that's right. I don't know how important this screw is right here. There's just too much, too many questions I have about this thing. Let me call someone in, let them look at it, um, and get an idea what I can pay for it. Okay? That's, that's all right. You bet. All right, I'll be right back. You bet. I can understand him bringing in an expert. He doesn't know how much I know and how much of mine is just smoke, so he needs to bring someone in to make sure he knows what he's getting. Greg, how's it going, man? Greetings, pawn shop brokers. How are you today? <laughs> yeah, the guys call me down when they get an antique firearm uh, that they want to know uh, more about. They want me to evaluate its condition, a value estimation, that sort of thing. This is what I would call a proto-double action. It's one of the first uh, double action revolvers, and the concept was that you could shoot a lot more quickly. In reality, not so much. The gun was very complex, so there was plenty of room for mechanical error and failure. Not very popular. They sold about 11,000 out of the 20,000 made to the government. The rest went to the civilian market. Why? Because the gun sucked. <laughs> so this is civilian. It's definitely not a uh, government-issued weapon. The interesting follow-on, though, is that the civilians often transported them south, uh, and they became used by the Confederacy as well. And for that reason, it's a neat collectible. The Savage Navy is an interesting firearm because it's a technology that, while it led to the double-action revolver, the idea did not work very well. It looks all there. I mean, um, there isn't any major damage to it besides the finish more or less being gone. There's a screw missing on the bottom. Uh, yep, you're right. I know what your next question is. Yeah, how much is it worth? Yeah. Um, you know, the good news is it's not restored in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, usually when you get a gun that's in this type of condition, someone will have made an attempt to restore it. You know, it's going to be a civilian model, and that's going to be the primary driving force behind its price. Of course, condition being the other driving force. So okay. I would say, uh, in its condition, as it sits, the gun's probably worth retail. $1,800 to $2,000. OK. Thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. A bad idea means they don't make very many, and that's one of the ingredients for something being very collectible. If you've got a Civil War collection, you have to have one of these guns. $800, Rick. Uh, no, no, that's not going to happen. No, I'm thinking more like $1,250, though. I really am. Uh, what, uh, you know, I was hoping to get about 1800 for the gun, OK? Yeah, well, that's I think what that's we want to get out of. I, I think you'll do a little better. They're really hard to find. I know they're a hard gun to find, but they sit around a long time. It's a weird gun, so. 1650. I'll go 1300 bucks. 1575. I'll go 1300 bucks. 1550. 1300 bucks. I, I mean, I can't do it, 1300. Sure you can. No, I can't. 14 and a half. That's really the best I can do. I'll go 1350. 1400, and I'll do that. And we'll shake hands, and I'll walk away. And you know I'm going to come back with some more cool stuff. Yeah, I'll do 1400. All right. I'll do 1400. Touchdown. OK. You Thanks. got to us again. Now that I got $1,400, I'm just going to find another gun and 
do it all over again. What is this box? Well, this is a uh, Civil War sword that commemorates the Trent Affair. The Trent Affair, yes. Sent by Confederate President Jefferson Davis, James M. Mason and John Siddell were taken prisoner off the British ship, the Trent. This is not used in battle, this kind of sword right here. Okay. And neither were either of the two envoys. Oh, uh, no, 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 they were politicians. Politicians okay. never fight. <laughs> <laughs> John Slidell had the sword commissioned and gave it to James Mason. They were the two Confederate envoys that were arrested by the Union. I'm asking 15,000, and if we can meet somewhere around 12 to 13, I may sell it. God, this is pretty amazing. Okay. To James Mason, lest, lest we, we forget. forget the trend. The American Civil War was going to hit England a lot harder than you might think, because they were not going to be able to get caught. So, they were sort of on the south side. And James Mason and John Siddell got passage on an English ship, the Trent, to go to Europe and get money, get arms, and put up cotton as collateral. You know, the North considered Siddell and Mason traitors. So, you know, basically an American uh, frigate pulled up next to him and says, we're boarding your ship and we're taking the guys. And that's when the storm happened. If an American ship boards an English ship in international waters, it's the same thing as invading their country. The Trent Affair might not be as well known as major Civil War battles, but historically, we were this close to getting in a war with England while we were fighting against our own brothers here at home. Thankfully, cool heads prevailed because it could have been an absolute disaster. I mean, it looks in great shape. Your paperwork's great. Um, the number you were looking for? I'm asking 15,000 for it. To me, it sounds high, OK? Because a nerd like me, and obviously a nerd like you, know exactly what the Trent is, 99% of the people in this world do not. And I'm thinking, like, five grand. Oh. Probably the least I could take for it would be 12,000. I, I can't do it. It's historically significant, but it doesn't have a general's name on the side of it that fought at the Battle of Gettysburg or something like that. I'll tell you what, I go six grand, I'm not a penny more. You can meet me at nine, we've got a deal. No, I go six. I certainly appreciate your time. I'll just have to hang on to it. All right. Thank you very um, much. Change your mind. Come on back. Thank you. When he offered me $5,000, I was tempted to pull the sword out and show him what it was really used for. I'm just not prepared to sell it at that price. What can I help you with? I have a watch here. OK. Apparently, it's an old watch. I hope so. Where did you get it? A garage sale. Really cool watch. Do you mind me asking what you paid for it? $20. <laughs> I came into the pawn shop today to try to sell my antique pocket watch. I'd like to sell it because I don't collect pocket watches. If I get 500 if I get 800 I'll be happy. Anything works for me. Do you know much about it? I don't know anything about it. I just discovered it, and it looked cool. So. Uh, well, I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, it's a uh, William Ellery. That's an American watch company that later became Waltham Watch Company. Abe Lincoln actually carried a Waltham watch. Wow. This is absolutely amazing back here. Um, Earl Butler Hero saved my life at Cross Keys, Robert M. Scott. That's, um... Something good? That is something good. It's, I'm assuming that's the Civil War. The watch is probably 1870s, 1880s. Pretty easy to date them. First off, it's a key wind and a key set. By the 1890s, they were almost all going to stem wines. That would make it right around the right time period. It has to be the Civil War. You just increase the cool factor by like 10 times, <laughs> OK? Because this actually belonged to a Civil War veteran. OK. OK? That was given to that person by another Civil War veteran. OK. Who saved his life at Cross Keys, which I'm assuming was a battle. One of the greatest gifts you could give in the 19th century was a pocket watch. Imagine, someone gave this to a friend who saved his life during the Civil War. I have never seen anything like it. Do you know if it runs? No. 
It's wanting to work. It's working. That's positive, right? Yes, I mean, the great thing about this watch is it's in amazing shape. It works great. The case is in amazing condition. We have a porcelain dial on it that doesn't have one crack. These things are notorious for cracking. There's a huge market for Civil War stuff. And a pocket watch in this condition with engraving on the back could be worth a fortune. Collectors would line up out the door to buy this thing. I mean, this has got me really fascinated right here, though. I'd really like to find out who these people are. These could be important people from the battle. OK. Um, I'd like to find out more about the battle. I have a buddy who knows just about everything there is to know about the Civil War. If there's something special here, you might have a lot more money. OK. All right? Great. I'll be right back. Thanks. Since he's calling in the expert, that must mean something good. I hope so, anyway. How you doing? Mark, how's it going? Doing all right. The guys normally call me down here when they've got uh, an historical artifact. I have this watch here, and the engraving says that it's from the Battle of Cross Keys. The Battle of Cross Keys was an interesting one. This was early on in the Civil War, and this was Stonewall Jackson, one of the best-known generals on the southern side. And Cross Keys was one of the battles with Union forces. And the Confederates had about 5,800 men in this battle. The Union side had over 11,000 men in this battle. And the Union lost. Were you able to find out anything about those names or anything like that? Well, there are a number of Robert M. Scotts out there. There are a number of Earl Butlers out there. They don't show up in the historic record um, individually that I could find. I mean, the watch is really cool. I mean, it seems like it's from the right time period and everything like that. Do you think it's legit? OK, do you mind if I take a closer look at it? Please. OK. Oh, yeah. The time period would be probably the late 1880s. So the name on it and the serial number both fit. That's all good. And if you were going to fake a piece like this, you would pick a battle that everybody's heard of. You know, it'd be, thanks for saving my life at Gettysburg or something. <laughs> yeah. And that the engraving is all hand done. In looking at it, I think that this is This appears to be correct to me. I think it's a very nice memorial from the Civil War. You know, this is somebody in post-war years and said, I want to say thank you. Hopefully that helps. Thanks, man. Not a problem? Thank, thank you. you very much. What do you want for it? 2000 I mean, the two people on there are really not known. So 700 bucks. But the battle's known. 1800 If it didn't have that engraving on it, it's literally worth four or 500 bucks. Let me give you $1,000 for it. Come on, you're going to make a profit either way. How about 15 I just don't know what I'm going to get out of it. I'll go 1300 not a dime more. 13 will work. OK, 1300 All right. I'll meet you right up front over there. All right, thanks. Bought it for $20, and I'm walking out with $1,300. I'm ecstatic. I couldn't be happier. Hey, Rick. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Oh, what do you got this time? Civil War Cavalry Saber. Just like in many businesses, I got repeat customers. And Bob has been selling me Civil War antiques for years. Yeah, it looks like it still has blood on the end of it. Isn't that cool? I'm here today at the pawn shop to try and sell my authentic Civil War Cavalry Saber. I'm hoping to sell this thing today for anywhere $1,500, maybe $2,000. God, it's incredible shape. Almost too good. I mean, if it was actually used in the Civil War, they would have put an edge on it, and an edge has never been put on this. It's really odd that it's not so sharpened up. Well, this is the real deal. My biggest concern with any antique that looks too good to be true is, generally, it is too good to be true. Uh, how much were you looking to get out of it? Well, I've done a little bit of research on it, and, uh, in this kind of condition, they go for $1,500 to $2,000. That's uh, retail, so if you go open up a store, that's what you can probably get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty valuable sort, I believe. Sometimes I feel like a broken record. I can't buy things for retail prices. If I bought and sold and everything for the same price, I'd be out of business. I'm definitely interested, but I'd really ha like to have it checked out by somebody. OK, good. OK, I got a buddy who deals in Civil War memorabilia. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have him come in and check it out. Fine. 
I know Rick's suspect because the condition's so good. I would welcome an expert to come and check it out. What I love about my job is I get to hold pieces of history that maybe only museums would have. You don't know who held it before. You know, maybe somebody famous, you know, held this and used this to defend themselves. These weapons are just cool. Any provenance, any paperwork? No, I got it from my granddad. Okay. So what concerns do you have, Rick? I just want to make sure it was real. I mean, it does look in pretty good shape for being this old. You know, you just don't find swords like this, you know, in this kind of condition. So I can understand your, your caution. I know it looks too good to be true, but there's an expert in there and he, he'll confirm it. I feel pretty good. I'm a little nervous about it, but not a lot. The majority of the uh, reproductions and fakes are coming out of India. If this were to be a reproduction, there's a couple of traits that you look for. The blades have, you know, wavy, you know, pound marks, and they're, they're just horrible. Um, they don't, you know, put the attention to detail, um, especially in the markings. And there's a couple other little marks here that I want to see. And which, here they are. Here's an H stamped, so that's a great sign. What's the H stand for? It's a military inspector. And here also you see the US stamp for that it was definitely a military issue. What about not having an edge on the sword? This is exactly how they were issued, with a blunt edge. Um, it was really more of a personal preference if you wanted to have a sharpened edge because on a horse, these swords were held off to the side. And if at a full gallop, charge if you can imagine just clipping people yeah it would really inflict some damage just from the little contact marks that i can see on the edge that this was actually used the markings are absolutely genuine they're exactly what you want to see so this was definitely a sword that was used in the civil war sean sure knows a lot about this sword i'm, I'm really happy that rick brought him in so sean what do you think this is worth uh, in an auction setting, I would say anywhere from two to 4,000. Great. And All right, Sean, thanks for coming in. Absolutely, Rick, anytime. Am I happy this sword is real? Yes. My only concern now is, how much is it gonna cost me? You like it, don't you? I like it. How about three grand? Um, how about no? <laughs> we know it's worth up to four grand at a good auction. Well, that's just it. You know, he said two to four thousand in auction, which means between two thousand and four thousand, okay? Which is a crapshoot of what you get. I follow. Okay. They'll probably charge you a catalog fee. They'll charge you a 25% auction fee. And the auction won't be for like another six to eight months. So right around a year, you'll get paid. And if it sells for $2,000 after all your fees and everything, you'll get like $1,300. Well, then why don't we call it 1500 and everybody's happy? I'd give you like a grant for it. And I, I think it's a fair price. All right. Let's do the deal. Okay. Thanks. Right. Good. I'm actually pretty happy. I've got $1,000 in my pocket. And instead of an old sword in the closet at home. Let's go do the paperwork. Okay. I'm pretty happy right now. I got the sword I wanted and at the price I wanted. And that just doesn't happen every day. Oh, not you again. This lady always brings in some gnarly stuff. Last time, she sold an old tooth extractor that gave Corey nightmares for weeks. What is that? This is a Civil War era syringe used to treat the soldier's syphilis and gonorrhea. Is that a urethra syringe? Yes, it was a syringe that went into the urethra. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> I love to come to the pawn shop because I love to get their input on my items. I would like to sell this because I'm kind of tired of looking at it. I've seen so much gonorrhea and chlamydia and STDs in my medical career that I don't think I need to come home and see the syringe anymore. So where did you get this thing? I received this from a collector. During the Civil War, STDs were rampant, and these were used commonly. Uh, yeah, as much as like 30% of the troops got bit by the love bug, um, prostitutes would set up their camp right next to the military camp. It was really bad, and doctors were trying to come up with various cures, I know that. They would put like boric acid in that thing. Mm -hmm. The caustic nature of it was supposed to hopefully kill everything in its path. Um, yeah, I cannot imagine having to go through that. Uh, so can I look at it? Sure, I wouldn't touch that end, no, though. I, I'm not gonna touch the business end, no. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's from the Civil War. Um, you can tell it's factory made, but it's still that really crude, early rubber technology. And it would do the job, basically. I mean, you just insert it and push. Is that a cover or is that the actual needle? Well, it wasn't a needle because this wasn't injected. This went into the tip of your thing. 
<laughs> During the Civil War, the treatments for venereal disease were downright medieval compared to what they do today. But hey, they had to try something. An army is not effective when all the men are sick. How much do you want for it? Mm, I probably would like to sell it for about 300. <sighs> all right. Uh... I mean, think about where this has been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's people who collect them. It's creepy. <laughs> You know, it's a tough sell. It's a weird sell. You know, how about 160 bucks? You know, you know, I agree with you. It is creepy. And I want it out of my house. I think 160 is fine. OK, we got a deal. OK. All right, you want to write her up, Chum? Yeah, <laughs> grab that thing and just meet over there. <laughs> I'm glad that we sold the item for $160. That's cool, because I can't wait to buy something that wasn't put into someone's urethra. Hey, what can I help you with? Well, um, got this uh, uniform jacket in with some costumes. We do some high school productions, and we get donations in periodically. And with that came this Civil War jacket. I mean, if it's real, it'll be really cool. I mean, it's from Civil War. Coming down to the pawn shop today to have them look at a Civil War jacket that I have. The reason I want to sell it today is that I'm hoping to get some money that we can put back into the wardrobe shop. If I could get at least $500 out of it, if it is authentic, I think that would be a, a great find for us. Well, it's definitely cool. Should you know anything about it? Actually, I don't. It was just in a bag of clothes that we got in, so I have no idea where it came from or any of the history on it. You know, it, quite frankly, it doesn't shock me that someone would just throw this in a bag and donate it. You wouldn't believe the amount of stuff I buy off people that they just find in attics. Sure, yeah. Yeah, the um, Civil War was mud, it was sweat, it was horses. It's not nearly as romantic as they make it out in the movies. You know, just rough, terrible existence as far as I'm concerned. Life was horrible for a soldier during the Civil War, and their uniforms didn't make things much better. Just imagine what it would be like wearing this heavy wool jacket in the summer in the South. Hundreds actually died of sunstroke. It looks really old. This looks like a Civil War cavalry jacket yeah. But I don't know. You know, my big concern about it is it just looks too good to be true. There's not one moth hole in it, and I mean, there's really no scuffs. If this uniform is real, it could be worth some serious money. But this thing is in amazing shape for its age. I know there's a lot of people who make these for reenactments, so I have to be careful. What do you want to do with it? Well, if we can get money for it, I mean, that's money to put toward the school for other things. OK. I really like it. Civil War stuff is cool, and okay. it sells. Sure. Uh, I'm going to call my buddy, and if there's any guy in the world who will know about this, it'll be Mark. Well, great. If it's all real, we'll um, figure something out. That'd okay. be great. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. I'm excited that they're bringing in an expert today, because if he can tell us that it's the real deal, then it's a win-win for everyone. Oh, I hate to tell you how many times I've seen things that have gone into costume collections that really shouldn't have. Rick, what are your concerns on it? I mean, it just looks too good to be true. And generally, when I see that, that's generally the case. Yeah, and you're right to think that way. Anytime you have a Civil War uniform, anything like that, and it's in perfect shape, yes, you do want to question it. There are a lot of reproductions. There are a lot of costumes that have been made. In order to tell whether this is real, what I'm looking for is you know, what kind of materials they are, how they're put together. These are inspector's marks. That means that it was inspected as it came into the military. That's what should have happened. Now, that's a little interesting. You normally have loops here that the belt would have gone through. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not original to the time period. The reality was in the Civil War, we were outfitting a huge army from almost nothing. So we were buying from anybody who could sew these things up. And Civil War uniforms are somewhat notorious for having variances from what the ordinance said. When you wore this, you wore it with uh, metal shoulder boards. And this doesn't show any sign of ever having shoulder boards on it. Even for the fact it doesn't have the loops, doesn't appear to have ever had shoulder boards, I think it's real. I think what you have is a Civil War Model 1854 uniform jacket.
My guess is this was worn by somebody behind the lines because it is in wonderful shape, or that it came out of surplus. Thank you nice for bringing it in. Appreciate it. I think this is a spectacular Civil War uniform. You don't see these anymore. So yes, I think, I, I rather hope Rick can get this one. Okay, so what are you looking to get out of it? We talking a thousand dollars or we? I really believe in an auction I can get 1,500, 2,000 out of this thing. Wow, that's impressive. But uh, there's a lot of fees with an auction. Well, sure. And I have to make a little bit for my time, effort, and risk. 750? Mm, go 850? I'll tell you what, I'll go 850. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's go do some paperwork. All right. I'm really excited to learn that this is real because it's great for the school, but it's also, it's gonna change my whole look at things when things come in. I ended up settling today for $850, so it was a, it was a great day. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? What do we got? I got a Confederate Civil War ribbon that I like to sell. Stonewell Jackson, wasn't he a long jumper? <laughs> I don't know about that. He might've jumped some bullets. I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Civil War ribbon. This ribbon has been passed down in the family. It's for my great-great-grandfather. I would like to get $500 for the ribbon, but I'm open to any kind of negotiation. So where'd you get this, man? This has been in my family for a long time. They gave this to my great-great-grandfather for uh, all his battles that he was in in the Civil War. This was a letter my great-great-grandfather hand wrote. One of my great aunts typed it exactly the way he wrote it. I participated in all the battles from Chickawanga to the surrender. Battle 78 and all. I return home the 16th day of May, 1865. That's pretty cool. Did he ever get wounded? He got shot four times. Oh, that's pretty gnarly getting shot back in the day. The fact that this guy's fought in so many battles, even after being shot four times, says a lot about him as a person. But it also just shows how passionate people were about this war. Ribbon says, in memory of Stonewall Jackson Camp number 91, Atlanta, Texas. I mean, he was pretty much General Lee's like ace in the hole guy. A lot of people will tell you that if Stonewall Jackson didn't get killed, the South probably would have won. He was just such a great general, and guys would follow him anywhere. So what do you want to do with it? This is just something that we would like to sell. Any idea what you want for it, or? I'd like to get around 700. To be honest with you, I don't have no idea what it's worth, and I really don't know how rare it is. Do you mind if I give a friend of mine a call? When it comes to historical items like this, he can kind of explain to me a little bit better what it is. That sounds wonderful. All right, I'll go give him a call. OK. There's definitely a healthy market for Confederate Civil War stuff, but something actually related to Stonewall Jackson could be huge. So received orders to report to Richmond, Virginia, formed in brigade service with General Bartz as commander, was killed in the Battle of Manassas. I'm guessing that's the Battle of Manassas. On the Union side, we called it Bull Run. The, the interesting thing, when you look at battles in the Civil War, the Union named battles after either a creek or a river or a mountain that was close by. The South named battles after the closest town. Oh. So that's why you get differing names. If you go through this, it does talk about a man who was in Confederate service, somebody that was maybe 18 or 20 when he enlisted. The fact that he was wounded four times and survived, that's pretty amazing. Because when you think about the kinds of weapons we were using during the Civil War, you were using very large, often 58 caliber soft lead slugs. You had to be tough to survive being in the hospital in the Civil War. So what are your concerns about it? What is it, first of all, and is there many of them out there? This is a membership badge oh. from the United Confederate Veterans. Okay. The United Confederate Veterans was basically a veterans organization. When you joined, you got a membership badge. The other side, though, was the memoriam side. You were dealing with an older group of men, but they were dying off. And you would go to the funerals, so that's why you had the black side on it but it has nothing to do with Stonewall Jackson. That was just the name they chose for their particular chapter. Because it's Confederate, there is a collector's market for it, but 
In this case, it's not in very good shape. It's missing some parts. It would have had a hanger here with a celluloid disc right here. It might have had an image of Stonewall Jackson. You don't find a lot of United Confederate veterans material, so there's obviously a collector's market. Well, Mark, that's everything I needed to know. All righty, not a problem, chum. So give me an idea of what you want for it again. $700. All right. It's pretty much a uh, VFW membership pass. The Confederate memorabilia is hard to find these days. I think it's pretty unique, to be honest with you. It's going to be really, really unique to you because it's your great-great-grandfather. Right. To me, as a guy that's going to buy it and then try to make a, make a profit on it, it's just not here. Could you maybe do 150? I'll do 100 bucks if it helps you out. Hundred dollars. You got a deal. All right, deal. Jump right up. This ribbon's very important to our family, but we have a lot of other items. The hundred dollars is going to do me really good instead of this ribbon just sitting in a corner of the house.